picking up from where we left off in the previous little video, we're going to symbolize some more sentences in quantificational and predicate logic. We have moved inside to the inside of the Shoreline Historical Museum in Shoreline, Washington. And we are in a restored 1912 classroom. This classroom is from 1912. So some people are kind of moving in or out, but it's got a lot of history here. A lot of history. And these two cutout figures behind us, I wish we could show them. So uh, this, we're in a 1912 classroom restored to pretty much what it was then. And uh, what do you want to do? Let's do some more of the predicate logic. Quantification logic. Come up, I give you, say, three statements and you try to translate them. Make them a little harder than the last ones. Are you trying to stump me? Uh, I'll give it a go. Okay. Okay. How about the first one? All except truckers are happy. All except truckers are happy. Okay. So that kind of a sentence is called an acceptive sentence for an obvious reason. So when we symbolize an acceptive, it's a little bit tricky. It's not, not obvious at first. But I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say, for any x, if x is a trucker, then x is not happy. So what this part says is what? All truckers are not happy. Every trucker is not happy. Okay. For any x, if x is a trucker, then x is not happy. Now I've said all the truckers are unhappy, but the sentence says all except truckers are happy. So everybody's going to be happy except truckers. So everybody's happy except truckers. So I'm going to now, this is now going to be a compound sentence then. So then I'm going to say, and for any x, if X is a person, because uh, I'm assuming that everybody except truckers is happy means people. we're talking about people. I'm assuming that. But since our variables range over the universal domain, we have not restricted our domain to some subset of the universe. We've not said that our variables only range over people, for instance. So we're, we're still using the universal domain. So I need to tell you that X is a person and... Oops. I'm. Oh, okay. If X is a person and I need more room, don't I? Can I move it down here? Sure. So I'm going to continue. <clears throat> so for and for any X, if X is a person and X is not a trucker, then X is happy. So we'll take that out. Let's see if that does it. Hmm. So this says every trucker is unhappy mm -hmm. and every person who is not a trucker is happy. Now if we were just to assume that the universe just contained people, mm -hmm. then this would do the job. But this, since we didn't, we're not assuming the universe contains just people, we need this other part also. Though. Well, if I can, yeah, but let me add something there. If I'm, if I'm assuming that, let's suppose that the, the domain is people. So now we're supposing that the variables range over all people and only over people. So now I want to say for any x, if x is a trucker, then x is not happy. And then I want to say for any x, uh, X is happy, right? No, oh, wait a minute. If X is, excuse me. <laughs> and for any X, if X is not a trucker, then X is happy. Keep getting tripped up there. Don't I need to say that? That all the truckers are not happy, but of course that doesn't imply everyone else is happy. I need to say, and everyone else is happy. All the non-truckers are happy if the variable is ranging over people. Does that work? Okay. For any x, if x is a trucker, then x is, thank you, not happy. And for any x, if x is not a trucker, then x is happy, supposing the domain is only people. 
Up here with the domain being the universe, I just say for any x, if x is a trucker, then x is not happy. Of course, it's assumed truckers are people. That's built in. And then for any x, if it's a person and it's not a trucker, then it's happy. Okay. I think that works. Okay. Let's try... Um, room for maybe one other one. Might be a little yeah. simpler. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, only students were admitted. Only mm. students were admitted. Okay. Now that kind of a sentence, you're trying to trip me up. That kind of a sentence is called an exclusive sentence because it's excluding everyone but one group from the predicate. Mm -hmm. So it's saying only, st only students were admitted. Right. So we're, we're excluding everyone but students and saying only the students were admitted. So only students were admitted. Well, when we symbolize this, an exclusive like this, it's kind of it's kind of confusing. The logic of such sentences isn't obvious on the surface. But if we say only students were admitted, let's let's look at two possibilities. Are we saying that for any x? Are we? This is a question. Are we saying for any x, if x is a student, then x was admitted? Uh, make a school. Are we saying that? Yeah, think of a ex so every, college. So every single student in the universe would be admitted. Yeah. It would be one big college. Right. Or are we saying this? If X was admitted, then X is a student. Actually, it might be m more realistic to think of this as a program, like a concert right. or something. So this one says... For any x, if x is a student, then x was admitted to whatever it is, program, concert, play, whatever. So this says what? All students were admitted. Oh, only um, this all is, students were admitted. Yeah, so this says all the students in the universe were admitted, which and, might and be millions. Plus some other people. It could be some non-students got admitted, too. Yes, so that's that. true. It doesn't imply that they didn't admit others, too. Whereas this just says... For any x, if x was admitted, then x was a student. So if you're admitted, we know darn sure that you're a student. Mm -hmm. Because only students were admitted. And so it's pretty clear, if you think about it, that the one that captures the meaning of the sentence, only students were admitted, is this one. Mm -hmm. So the way we say only students were admitted is we say for any x, if x was admitted, then x is a student. So it doesn't follow that um, all students were admitted, it just means that all who were admitted were students. Yep. Okay. That's an exclusive sentence. So when we symbolize an exclusive, we, the English sentence may say all, all who were admitted were students, but we'll reverse the order of the predicates constants when we symbolize it, won't we? Okay, I've got one more for you here. Okay. But sometimes this kind of trips some people up. It'll sound simple, but we'll see what you do. Okay. All dogs and cats are mammals. Okay. All dogs and cats are mammals, which is true. All dogs and cats are mammals. So let's look at the two things here. It's tempting to symbolize it close to the English grammar. Well, you'd think you'd want to do that. Yeah, and so it, one is tempted at first to say, for any x... You know, we're saying all cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. So one's tempted to say, well, for any x, you know, cx and dx, then mx. That's um, a temptation. Mm -hmm. Now, what does this literally say? say? Well, for all things, that thing's a cat and that thing's a dog, then that thing's a mammal. That thing's a cat and a dog. So this says all cat dogs are mammals. That'd be a strange critter. Yeah. And I guess I didn't mean that. No. So how else would you do that? I heard the word and, so why yeah. is there an ampersand there? Right. That's, that's, why it's, that's why you hear the and, you want to put <clears> the ampersand there. But this says that for any x, if it's both a cat and a dog, then it's a mammal, which is really not what the original sentence said. So the original sentence was all cats and dogs are mammals. We're going to say for any x, if x is a cat... Or X is a dog. Either way. Then X is a mammal. 
Okay. Or did you say animal? Would you say mammal? I think you did. Oh, mammal. So for any x, if x is a cat or x is a dog, then x is a mammal, does say all cats and dogs are mammals. So we actually need to understand what is being said and then give it the closest translation we can to what is being said. Yes. And, and it's, I hear the word and, this is actually really what's getting, this is getting across the idea of what's being said here. Yeah, so that even though the surface grammar has and in it, the symbolization has an or in it. Although we could symbolize it this way. We could say, for any x, if x is a cat, then x is a mammal. And for any x, if x is a dog, then x is a mammal. We could do that, right? Well, actually, if we want. All cats are mammals and all dogs are mammals. Which do you like better? This is a conjunction. Mm -hmm. That's a universal statement. Uh -huh. If I say all cats and dogs are animals, does that sound like a conjunction to you more or a uni universal statement more? Well, this seems closer to the grammar, doesn't it? Me too, yeah. But this does, is logically equivalent. Yeah. yeah.